Okay, uh, that last story there about the plate thing with Avery smashing his bird, that reminded me of another story that happened with a big piece of plate. And uh, this one's not so funny. Um, back in 1994, 95, I was working in the United States down in North Carolina outside of Winston-Salem at a place called Kobe Copper which I don't even know if it's still there anymore, probably still is, is a copper smelting plant. They had a uh, copper smelter, like a big steel pot basically with a lid and uh, had the electrodes and everything like that on top and you smelt down and scrap copper. Anyway, that's beside the point, but uh, it was good size, like the size of a very large round backyard swimming pool, um, you know, good 10 feet deep. The walls were made of three inch thick plate steel. And uh, after it ran for, it used to run for like four or five months at a time before they'd shut it down and do some work, uh, uh, it would corrode on the inside and they'd have to uh, cut out large sections. And, uh, you know, we were there to basically weld them in. And uh, so there was a lot of plates uh, laying around at the top of this thing. And uh, the crane operator would come along once we needed a new piece plate put in and I uh, grab it and grab with a big plate grab and uh, hoist it down in there and pieces of plate that were three inches thick and as, as big as this uh, this little thing here just to show you, you know, basically how big they were but this is like three by four and uh, so we had them laying all around on the ground outside the, uh, the job and we had a junior engineer hanging around the job site. I, guess, I think he worked for Kobe there. He was just, his job was to do nothing but basically hang around. <laughs> he didn't really, he didn't do much. Typical engineer. But uh, um, he was so bored after a few weeks, because this was going on like a three, four week job. And he wanted to be real helpful because he was the guy on top and we were all down in the pit so he'd pass us hammers and tools and try and help out in any way he could which really he shouldn't have he should have been just minding his own business and you know just be bored you know he, he really shouldn't have been doing any sort of labor work it's really not in his scope of work but uh, you know it's all right somebody wants to help out so we had some riggers there and uh, whenever a plate had to come down uh, he would uh, the riggers would take a very large pry bar. This is, I'm just, I don't have one. You know those big rock bars, you know, the square ended rock bars? Uh, he had one of those things. And what he was doing was, he saw the riggers doing this, so they were lifting it up a little bit, you know, three or four inches, just enough to get that plate grab on. And uh, he wasn't really being especially safe about it. And he kept, lifting it higher and higher. And what he did this one particular time with this piece of plate, it was a good 800 to 1,000 pounds, he lifted it up like this, and you gotta remember he had on engineer's uh, steel-toed shoes, right? He didn't have steel-toed, like, decent boots. It wouldn't have helped much anyway, but he just had the shoes, little dress shoes with the steel toes in them. He lifts it up, he gets way under there, he's on this thing and he puts his foot here without you know thinking about it because it didn't cause him a problem before he just held it and put the plate grab on this time he put his foot under there and basically it came down it slipped down the bar it went right down his shin chewed all the meat off of his shin and he went back to it basically it pushed him back it didn't push him back far enough because it broke his leg down at the bottom here, and smashed his foot, and uh, that was pretty ugly. He uh, it, it basically cleaned all the meat right off the bone, and it kind of really raked the bone down first before it actually snapped it, and then it was more or less a compound fracture on the back where the lower part of his uh, his leg bone was kind of jamming out the back there, and uh, he screamed pretty good. He, I think he screamed a lot louder than Avery did when he smashed his bird with that fucking two-inch plate. So, but uh, anyway, that's uh, that's another horrible story, and 
basically it's one of those ones it's not funny um, but maybe if you learn something from it you know that's the whole point of this story is you know hopefully you learn something I know I learned a little something about it. keep your toes away from a thousand pound plate